Good morning, one and all. Today I'm going to start uh, a lecture class on a new topic. That's on non uh, communicable diseases. Out of non communicable diseases, today I'm going to discuss with you cardiovascular diseases. This uh, particular uh, lecture class is a general lecture class and it deals with all the cardiovascular diseases. Uh, individual cardiovascular disease will be dealt in the subsequent lecture classes. So, as you know, cardiovascular disease they comprise a group of diseases uh, of the vascular system and uh, the heart and the vascular system. The major conditions are ischemic heart disease or coronary heart disease, hypertension, cerebrovascular disease, congenital heart disease, and rheumatic heart disease. So they are basically group of diseases the heart and the vascular system. So very important of these are, as I mentioned earlier, to repeat, ischemic heart disease or coronary heart disease, hypertension, cerebrovascular disease, congenital heart disease, and rheumatic heart disease. All these cardiovascular diseases, cancer, diabetes, and other diseases, non communicable diseases, of late have been seen to rise in the developing countries because of the technological transition and because of the change in behavior, uh, behavior and attitude of the people concerned, and also. And also because of the lack of primary healthcare, robust primary healthcare system. But these non vascular diseases, non cardiovascular, non communicable diseases are seen on the decline in industrialized countries because of the robust primary healthcare system and because of the change in attitude of behavior as well as, as, well as the risk factors for these non communicable diseases are concerned. In the world, cardiovascular diseases are the number one cause of global death or the death globally. So, if you look into this uh, different causes of death, cardiovascular diseases have been probably number one. An estimated 7.7 million people died from cardiovascular diseases in the year 2015. That is 31% of all the global deaths. So, it means the number, the numbers who have died from cardiovascular diseases are substantial. And we find in the number that is 7.7. Of these, 7.4 million were due to coronary heart disease and ischemic heart disease, and 6.7 million are due to stroke. So, coronary heart disease form a sizable proportion of the 70.7 million people uh, who have died in cardiovascular diseases. 82% of the world's deaths are from cardiovascular diseases which are occurring in low income countries and middle income countries. The incidence of cardiovascular disease. Is greater in urban areas than in rural areas. Better than I can observe. And a peculiar cause of concern is the relatively early area of cardiovascular deaths in the developing countries. So, what we find in developing countries is that cardiovascular diseases have been seen to strike in a very early age group. In the late 25 to 40 years, people have been uh, suffering from cardiovascular diseases, and the mortality due to cardiovascular diseases in this age group is also seen to. Cardiovascular diseases are now in decline in industrialized countries, which is largely an immediate and success of primary prevention and to address extreme treatment. So, as I said earlier, in industrialized countries, there is a robust or a strong primary prevention wherein uh, the uh, risk factors are diagnosed earlier and uh, diagnosed earlier and uh, uh, screened earlier, and as a result, Treatment is also <coughs> given on time, and also the health promotion measures are also very good. And this is attributed mostly to primary prevention and to a lesser extent to treatment. So, everything lies primarily on prevention, that is primary prevention. The intervention in primary prevention, as you know, is health promotion and specific prevention. So, what are the various health promotion methods which are uh, useful uh, as far as this uh, you know, cardiovascular disease, reduction of cardiovascular disease is concerned, is strictly being followed in Western countries and specific protection is also being offered to this uh, uh, people affected by this cardiovascular disease. The middle income countries and the low income countries are at the midpoint of the emerging epidemic. As I said, these middle income and low income countries are the metabolic transition, wherein the behavioral 
behavioral attitude or the behavior or the behavioral concept also changes because of increased consumption of uh, tobacco or alcohol or sedentary habits, which can uh, which can hasten the uprise of this cardiovascular disease in this particular case. And this will have a full impact in the coming years till the public health system or the primary health care system becomes fully strong. Now let us find out how do we how in India we have this particular problem of cardiovascular disease. An estimated 2.59 million people died of cardiovascular disease in India during the year 2016. So we have some 2.5 million people so, uh, who have been affected because of this year. The so table one in the next slide shows the breakup of the cases and two death rate for one lakh population as reported to world health population. So if you see the number of uh, total number of deaths, two death rate due to uh, various diseases that have been found that two death rate is maximum for cardiovascular disease, followed by ischemic heart disease, followed by stroke, followed by hypertension. Followed by rheumatic heart. So the maximum what we can see is what we can see is two cardiovascular disease and the two death rate in that particular disease is 195.6 per one lakh uh, per one lakh population. As I know, as I said earlier, two death rate per one lakh population. So if you see the cardiovascular disease, we find the two death rate is more in men compared to the of women. Likewise, if you see in case of ischemic heart disease, you find the two death rate is more in men compared to women. And also if you see uh, uh, you see if you see the number of people who are affected in both the sexes, especially in stroke, they are more or less the same, 54.2 two death rate for one like population in males and 52.4 uh, uh, two death rate for one lakh uh, for one lakh uh, uh, women in case of females. So in hypertension, if you know them, you see the number of women being more affected compared to that of men. Where we have the two death rate as nine point five for one lakh population in women compared to seven point nine for one lakh population. Compared with all other countries, India suffers the highest loss in potentially preventive years of life. Due to the deaths from cardiovascular disease in people aged 35 to 64 years. So, it has been observed that uh, these cardiovascular diseases affect a lot among people in the 22 years of life. So, there is a great loss of life, human loss, human loss, uh, as well as the number of years, productive years are also lost because it is during this time a uh, person works to earn his living. And most of the economic output of the country is based upon the productive years, uh, productive years of life in this particular age group. Prevalence is two to three times higher in the urban population as compared to the rural population because the urban population is exposed or have more of a risk factors compared to the rural population and because of other extraneous factors. In one study, the prevalence of ischemic heart disease among adults was estimated at 96.7 per 1,000 population in urban areas and 27.1 per 1,000 in rural areas. So this is based again on uh, clinical examination and ECG, Chris. Uh, so based on ECG and clinical examination, it was found so coronary heart disease or ischemic heart disease is more in urban areas compared to rural areas. So the risk factors contributing to cardiovascular disease in the year 2016 are total alcohol per capita consumption per year, that is age 15 plus. This, that is the liters of pure alcohol that is consumed. So if you look into that, more number of males compared to more number of females, and it consumes around um, six liters on an average. Physical activity that we found to be 24%, that is a little bit more. Uh, less in case of males and more in case of females. Mean population of salt intake, adults age 20 plus, in grass per day is more in males compared to that of females. Current tobacco 
smoking adults <coughs> within plus we find more in males compared to that of females raised blood pressure 18 plus uh, we find more in case of males compared to that of females raised blood sugar blood glucose in adults 18 plus we find more equal in males and females obesity 80 plus percentage we find more in females five compared to that of three uh, percent Obesity adolescents we find more in males compared to the female. It's again a percentage of obesity. The adolescent age group, the adolescent especially ten to nine years. So these are the risk factors that are identified: alcohol, physical inactivity, salt intake, tobacco, hypertension, diabetes, obesity, in adults as well as adolescents. Risk factors: within mortality rates, there are the consequences of the previous exposure to behavioral risk factors such as inactivity, nutrition. Insufficient physical activity and increased tobacco consumption. So, more and more tobacco is consumed by younger people as a, uh, because of, uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a result of fads or fashion advertisements, and there is insufficient physical activity. Either they are occupied uh, with most of the time with the television, becoming couch potatoes, or uh, involved in more of the Mobile phones or the computers and inappropriate nutrition, mostly fast food, which are rich in uh, trans fatty acids and uh, not having proper nutrition. So, they are all responsible uh, for the uh, all these behaviors, the risk factors are responsible for the increased mortality rates. <laughs> it is also for the lack and effect of risk factors for cardiovascular disease. So, the biological factors contributing. Principally, to increase this car, what overweight. So, overweight as per the BMI is more than or equal to 25 kg per, per liter square. Weight in kg per liter square. So, right in meter square. So, that is BMI. So, you know, normal BMI is 18 to 24.5 uh, kg per liter square, and overweight is more than 25, more than or equal to 25. Kg per liter square, we call when a person is under the BMI. Then central obesity. Central obesity is mostly due to base circumference, and if the base circumference is more, and we call it as central obesity, and the high blood pressure. So blood pressure is a various scales of measurement, that is JNC7, JNC8, athlete, young model, JNC8, joint national therapy, and the working group on prevention, detection, and treatment of hypertension. And this is basically an American. And this lipidemia or hyperlipidemia or diabetes and low cardio respiratory fitness. Unhealthy dietary practices include a high consumption of saturated fats and salt, and refined carbohydrates, as well as a low consumption of vegetables and fruits, and these tend to cluster together. So, high consumption of saturated fats, mostly fats, poly. Uh, uh, you have more of saturated fats being consumed, and more of salt being taken. More of fine hands, and refined carbohydrates, which are less of fiber, and more of what they call fiber related foods or sweets, and low consumption of vegetables and fruits, uh, especially dark green leafy vegetables, if they are not taken in the fruits, which are rich in protective uh, elements like vitamins and minerals, if they are not taken in the they combine with healthy dietary practices, which may Cluster together when you look at the this particular disease. There are also applied nutrients of cardiovascular diseases such as the causes of the products. They are globalization, urbanization, aging of the population, poverty, stress, and hereditary factors. So these are the factors which are indirectly responsible for the rise in risk factors, which are exactly the causes of. This cardiovascular disease. So these are the indirect factors which are responsible for increasing the risk of factors or the causes of the uh, uh, cardiovascular disease. So these factors like globalization, urbanization, population aging, power stress, and aging factor are the causes for the causes of risk factors of cardiovascular disease. So these causes are responsible for those causes of uh, causes of risk factors of cardiovascular disease. That's why they are not as the causes of the causes. So all these factors like globalization, urbanization, population, and powerful stress and other factors are the causes of the problems. 
symptoms of heart attack and stroke. This is a brief description, clinical description of how a heart attack would present itself. A pain or a discomfort in the center of the chest, a pain or discomfort in the arms, the left shoulder, elbows, jaws, or back. In addition, the person may experience difficulty in breathing for shortness of breath. The person may feel dizzy. There will be a sense of nausea or feeling sick or vomiting. There is a sense of feeling lightheaded or the person may be faint or there may be a cold sweat that may be seen and the body tends to, tends to become uh, cold with sweat and the, body, and the person may also become pale. So these are the symptoms of heart attack that are observed uh, in the people who suffer from that. So may, most important is pain and discomfort in the center of the chest and pain and discomfort in the arms, left to shoulder, elbows, jaws and back. If the person is suffering from that, please don't try to neglect it. It may be due to heart attack or it may be due to some other cause, but immediately the patient has to be attended or immediately the ambulance has to be brought so that the patient can be shifted to the nearest hospital or health center where the necessary first aid can be given and subsequently treatment. Women who suffer from cardiovascular disease are more likely to have shortness of breath, nausea, vomiting, lack of jaw. So, nausea and vomiting are very common, shortness of breath are very common. Case of women. And unlike men, they have chest pain, which is very, very important. Now, what are the symptoms of stroke? Symptoms of stroke include sudden weakness of the face, arm, and leg. So, you feel, you feel weakness in one part of the face. Or you feel weakness in the arm or leg, and most probably on one side of the body and the left or right. So you feel sudden weakness in the face, arm or leg. And other symptoms include sudden onset of numbness in the face, arm or leg, especially in one side. So you feel face becoming numb. You hardly feel any sensation of the face. You hardly feel any sensation of the arm. You hardly feel any sensation of the leg. You feel as though they are somewhat existing or hanging on one side of the body. So, numbness in the face, arm, and leg should be taken to do a consideration. Confusion means lack of confusion. Difficulty in speaking or understanding speech. So, the person, whatever he tries to say, the other person will not be able to understand. There will be difficulty in understanding what he is speaking. So, it will be spotted as a person very well. So, that uh, any person who is uh, Facing a person who is suffering from stroke and there is uh, difficulty in speaking by the person, affected person, you should take it to account that the person is suffering from chronic trouble. Difficulty in seeing with one eye or both eyes, so that the person will uh, hardly be able to see because the person will become blurred, uh, is what we have to say, eyes will be, uh, will be blurring the vision. Difficulty in waking, in uh, waking, dizziness. So there will be a difficulty in uh, walking, it's not waking, walking, or uh, dizziness will be a problem. There is a loss of balance of the So the person won't be able to walk, the person may feel giddy, and he may, there is a loss of balance in the person, or coordination of his uh, movement, as a result, will be a fall. <coughs> there may be a severe headache, maybe a hospital headache. It will be a severe headache with no cause and fainting or unconsciousness. The person faints with some consciousness uh, uh, immediately uh, or avoiding all these symptoms. Uh, they should be uh, immediately taken care or transferred to a nearest, transfer to a nearest, nearest hospital for the first aid and subsequently treatment. Now, what are the symptoms of rheumatic heart disease? So, rheumatic heart disease is basically a non communicable disease which starts simply from the sore throat or stomatal pharyngitis, which is a communicable disease which may result in rheumatic fever, and this rheumatic fever will subsequently result in rheumatic heart disease. So, a person suffering from, uh, uh, suffering from stomatal pharyngitis due to a beta hemolytic streptococcus. This, this streptococcus is responsible for chronic pharyngitis in, uh, in children as well as in adults. And especially younger age groups, and uh, this may result in a condition of rheumatic fever, 
and this rheumatic fever if it uh, uh, rheumatic fever this may affect the heart as well as the joint so so as i said rheumatic heart disease will occur so the symptoms of rheumatic heart disease are shortness of breath the person may be again having dyspnea the person may be having very fatigue or uh, tired if the person may become tired there is irregular heart beats there is chest pain and faint and faint so uh, rheumatic fever and rheumatic heart disease are a number of uh, criteria for jones criteria which will you will understand later in subsequent uh, uh, chapters when we have a a specific chapter of rheumatic fever and rheumatic heart disease so you will have this symptoms of rheumatic fever include fever pain swelling of the joints nausea stomach stomach cramps okay so all these are signs and symptoms of uh, rheumatic fever and rheumatic heart disease so jones criteria one of the warning signs and one of the uh, minor signs various signs of uh, this uh, jones criteria so uh, all these are very very important to you such a very very factors are uh, case of rheumatic fever now one of the various interventions to reduce cardiovascular disease what we have one is primary prevention second is secondary prevention what is primary prevention intervention is health promotion and specific prevention and secondary prevention is early diagnosis and so primary prevention includes population wide intervention at individual level of prevention usually both the interventions have to work in tandem so as to bring down the effect of cardiovascular disease what is primary prevention so primary prevention we have population based strategy and population wide intervention which are comprehensive proactive and policies so the government should have some sort of uh, policies whether it is a and the, the regulatory or the legislative policy regarding the uh, production and sale of tobacco uh, and, uh, and the legislation should be and in the, the policy should be comprehensive so as to cover areas public areas public areas smoking zones non smoking zones age groups where the tobacco is consumed in the, the form of smoking or non smoking forms of tobacco Taxation to reduce intake of foods that are rich in fat, sugar, and salt. So many times in many countries, uh, higher higher amount of taxes are imposed on foods which are rich in fat, and this is mainly to dissuade uh, people or children uh, to buy things that are rich in fat, sugar, and salt. So mandatory warning signs or statutory warnings. Are uh, put on this particular uh, foodstuffs. We in fact in packs of foodstuffs which are sold. So these foodstuffs have to be avoided, uh, uh, conjured with discretion or caution. So the taxation is there. So the government should be doing all their efforts to dissuade people from consuming these foods rich in oil. Yes. Building walking and cycling paths to reduce physical activity. Many times in cities and towns, we don't have a separate path for walking and cycle or for cycling. So many times in Western countries, we find there are separate paths where cycles can, where a person can easily cycle his walking paths. So as a result, the pollution due to vehicles is controlled. As a result, the person. is subject to some sort of exercise or increased physical activity and uh, walking also ensures increased physical activity which are very good as far as the reduction of risk factors for cardiovascular disease and so so the government should promote more of walking and cycling paths to increase physical activity strategies to reduce harmful use of alcohol alcohol with permissible limits are to be put so that people cannot use Are uh, over drink alcohol as a result they may have uh, increased risk factors for cardiovascular disease. So whether the sale of alcohol uh, is limited to certain amounts or to certain timings, so that the people can reduce the consumption of alcohol. Providing healthy school meals to children, 
So in many countries, and even in our country, we also provide school meals to children in the form of midday meal to children. So they are given nutritious food. This not only serves to have some amount of nutrition as well as it increases the school attendance and then as well as it provides the children in order to have uh, develop the latest practice of learning as well. So all these good things are a must. I think that there are new education policies that the government has taken. The government is also inclined to provide breakfast to school children who have been needs to the school children. So many schools in our country, especially the, the ICDS, or midday meal school, or uh, midday meal program. Uh, so, so all these uh, nutrition programs are meant for providing school meals or meals to children attending the school. Individual level intervention. Targeted at those who have high quality cardiovascular risk. For example, those who are with a family step back, like I mentioned in my case, those who are obese, those who are diabetic, uh, those uh, having a history of atherosclerosis. So, high total cardiovascular risk uh, among the people, these people are targeted, and all the uh, interventions are done under so that, like, uh, exercise, less consumption of soil, uh, avoidance of smoking and alcohol. Avoiding such uh, avoiding stress in those people and, uh, and adopting a healthy lifestyle so that uh, they can the cardiovascular risk in those people can be cut down. Those with single risk factors are about pressure, pressure, etc. Hypertension and cholesterol. Yeah. Those who are having hypertension, a single risk factor like hypertension, are increased uh, cholesterol levels and hyperlipidemia can also serve as uh, can also be targeted by the of pressure. Second definition, I think the second definition is early diagnosis of treatment. So those with established disease like diabetes, treatment with the following medications are used. So you <coughs> those who are having diabetes and hypertension, uh, uh, certain, uh, certain treatments are being given to them, either like aspirin, beta blockers, antibiotics, inhibitors, statins, all these are required to bring down. Cardiovascular disease and the initial surgical intervention operations are sometimes required to treat cardiovascular disease. In relation to this routine treatment, sometimes surgical operations are required to treat cardiovascular disease. These include coronary artery bypass. Many a times, if there is a blockage in the coronary arteries, the bypass is a so that the blood is always a blockage and there is. Supply of blood to the heart muscle, and as I said, ischemia, renal infarction. Minimum angioplasty is a delivery device which threaded into an artery or a vein, and subsequently, this balloon uh, will help to overcome this particular block. As a result, the pregnancy of the person is contained, as a result, uh, the person can get heart of the fish of the heart muscle, and the heart becomes. And the payment of the payment will be after this. Wall repair and replacement. Many times the walls are affected, the vital walls, the actual walls, the replacement walls. Sometimes they may require replacement and treatment. Sometimes heart transplantation is required for it. The heart transplant, the heart is transplanted. The person who has died, the heart is transplanted for them. Immediately in this country. So, heart transplantation is also applied in many cases. So, this is very important to understand that uh, many of the surgical operations are nowadays become very common to the increase in cardiovascular disease, especially in the previous group. Now, there are certain things which we need to understand about stroke, and as a student, medical student, you should be well versed if uh, somebody is having these signs and symptoms. First is an acronym. Used and mnemonic to help detect and enhance responsiveness to the needs of the person affected by a stroke. What is fast? The face, face drooping, as you have seen here, is a drooping of the face. 
Second is arm weakness. There is weakness on one side only. There is a putting on the shoulder. There is slurring of speech or inability uh, to have a proper speech or difficulty of speech. And T is the uh, uh, time that is required to call emergency services, the emergency services are not bad. There is like zero age, so you can call them. I say this particular person is having this problem and you can shift this problem. A person having all this immediately today, I see you on a counselor. A section of the face, usually on one side, that is dripping and hard to do. This can be very bad because smile. So the person is not able to smile on you. You find one side of the face dripping and hard to do. You see, there is also weakness on one side of the person to raise your arm, and the person is not able to raise your arm. Or uh, hold something or squeeze someone's hand. So, this is also a sign of a stroke, and there will be a speech difficulty. So, whatever the person is trying to say, you're not able to understand, the speech is slurred, or the difficulty of repeating basic sentences such as the sky is blue. So, many a times the person is not able to repeat a basic sentence, or uh, uh, you find difficulty to understand what the person is saying. But many other symptoms showing. Time is of the essence, then call the emergency services and go to the bathroom immediately. It's also important to check the time that you know when the first symptoms appear that this time is pain. So this is how the person uh, affected by stroke looks like this. So face is affected, looking at the face, weakness in the arm, it's not able to hold this particular peak up, and there is a difficulty in speech, our speech is slurred, and immediately you call. Uh, to 108 in so that you are staying, so that the person is going to take up the heart. Now, there are some changes that are made with different organization time they make, and things that are added is be fast. Be fast is balance, eyes, face, arm, speech, and time. So, all these are very, very important that we need to understand about. Uh, so, balance is loss of balance. Headache or dizziness. Eyes is blurred vision. Face is dripping of the face. Arm is weakness of the arms. And, uh, and uh, the speech is difficult in speech. And the uh, time is uh, you need to call the person. There is something again that is added to this case new fast. It's an additional stroke identification of two development values. It was copyrighted by. The approach table can plan in 2016 as a part of the ENP project. It was created to identify all types of stroke, anterior approach, and ischemic or hemorrhagic strokes. It gives more definition to us, dizziness and balance, hallmarks, signs of anterior strokes, and signs of surgery. UFOS also addresses the sudden onset of a severe headache and vomiting, often accompanied during midnight. So, UFOS means nausea, vomiting, sudden onset, eyes is double vision. Feel cut, neglect, walking, if you cannot walk, you have business, or try to walk, you shift to one side. Facial drooping, on one side of the face is drooping, arm weakness, speech is slurred, confused or absent. These terrible headache or dizziness, often described as thunderclap, headache or dizziness, regardless of the position of the body, sitting, standing, and So, for stroke, what you need to do is you need to understand fast or move fast or move fast. All these are uh, latest uh, things that we need to understand about whether a person is suffering from stroke so that if you, you have observe all these uh, signs and symptoms, how do we can get to the hospital by an ambulance to shift the patient to the hospital as soon as possible and by the other the patient may be taken care of. Thank you for your patient hearing. This is an introduction to cardiovascular disease. Subsequent classes will deal with the usual topic. Um, those diseases which are patient of the cardiovascular disease. Thank you for your attention.